guys, welcome back to Irish Funny Vlogs. Delighted to welcome Dara Burns onto the show. Obviously, Luke McQuillan's here with me as well. Dara, mm-hmm. what's the crack, man? Looking well in that apartment. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm loving it over here so far. Uh, I think I'm over here now just over two weeks. So, uh, yeah, I've settled in well. Absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. I'm just going to just, I'll just kick us off here, Dara. Um, obviously, I know you long enough now, but I was just, I was telling Keith about earlier on, you know, about uh, growing up with yourself and obviously playing like Wembo on the green, if you'll remember, in front of the gap. And uh, I've always said that uh, even even if we were just playing a match where it'd be like first pick, second pick or whatever, um, everyone wanted to be on Dar. always everyone wanted to be on Dara's team. Uh, do you want to just tell us a bit about uh, just growing up in Stamullen as an Irish boy? Yeah, no, just like just like any normal lad, really, was not I? Uh, mm. Played played football after school, tried to get me homework done as quick as possible, and then head around to the green. Mm. I think that used to be about twenty. Was around doing a Friday after oh. school. Yeah, it was, it was very noble. I come from, we come from a nice area, and lot mm. lot lot of sporting people around the area as well. So a lot of people play football, which made it easy for me just to go and have a kick about with the lads. And uh, yeah, now we. I, I loved it to be fair and all them little kickabouts got me to where I am now. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant stuff. How are you settling in, Dara? Obviously, like in terms of off the pitch first, like you've moved away from home for the first time ever and uh, how's life without your mammy basically? So I'm trying yeah, no, to say. No. Uh, my mom was only over with me there. She only left on uh, Sunday, I think. So she she's a bass because she was when I was leaving. She was more worried than I was. I was grand. Uh, now look at if you said to me a few years ago, you're gonna be living away from home, your your sister, your ma, your dad, you'd be thinking, Jesus, I don't know if I'd be able for that, but to be fair, I've adapted very well. There's a good group of lads here at MK Dons, they've set me in well everyone at the club have been very welcoming. So, you know what? It was a uh, it's a it's a change in my life, but I think it's the one that was that was gonna come and had to come for me. If I wanted to progress in this career and was serious, so yeah, no, it's, it's obviously going to be yeah, a bit of a challenge living away from home and living away from your family, but it's what you got to do, isn't it? Yeah, you're moving out soon, is that right? Yeah, uh, Monday, get me an apartment, so buzzing. <laughs> that could be interesting. That could be interesting. Uh, what made you sign there for NK Dons in the first place? Yeah, no, there was a, there was a couple of clubs obviously uh, interested and wanted to sign me and, and whatnot, but. I obviously had a meeting with all different clubs and was chatting and just doing, doing your homework before you commit. But MK Dance was seemed like the perfect fit for me. The stadium over here is a joke, like 30,000 seater and biggest pitch in the league, widest pitch in the league. So it suits me down to the ground. And then the gaffer at MK Dance uh, wanted to get me in. And yeah, it just seemed like the perfect fit for me. And it's, uh, it's gone well so far, so I'm delighted. What sort of yeah, training facilities is it like? What's it like over there as well with the training facilities? Yeah, no, the pitch is, the pitch is a joke that we train on. It's very yeah. good. It was used to a bubble <laughs> when the ball comes into my feet, but now it's a carpet. Here and the women's Euros has been held in the stadium, so yeah. I haven't got onto that pitch yet. But now the training, the training uh, pitch and all is very good. And we're eating and we spend, like people say, you not be bored over here, but like, I didn't get out of training until four o'clock today, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a double double session and then in the gym. So you'd be tired when you come home and look at we're, we're treated like babies over here. To be honest, everything's just going for us. So we just have to go into training and, and turn up on a match day. <laughs> How are you finding the game so far, Dara? You've obviously played a couple of matches so far. How are you finding them? Yeah, no, it's very good. To, in, like I, people are saying you're fit and all coming in because the way that League of Ireland season works compared to the English season, but. I played 22 games, I think, before I moved over. Mm. Uh, and the standard and the intensity over here is like, it's mad. Like, the lads are so fit and that's only the start of their pre-season, you know what I mean? It's uh, mm. and the matches. The matches are a very quick tempo, but the way we like to play, we like to keep the ball. So, the games we played in, we've done well. Uh, think of three games now. We play again on Saturday, the last game before the league. So, yeah, yeah. the Games are gonna come uh, quick. I think it's Saturday, Saturday, Tuesday. The way the season runs mm-hmm. over here, so mm-hmm. you know what? Footballer wants to play games. Training, training's all right, but you look forward to match days. So I've had three on the belt now, and I look forward to more. 
Yeah, and just for yourself, Dara, obviously coming over into a, a new country and that for you, but you've also come across, and I know you came over a bit earlier than uh, Dawson did, Dawson Devoy, um, obviously yeah. made the move across as well, and as a lad you know very well from the Irish under 21s, it uh, makes it easier for uh, the two of you, because you're both in the, the same boat, two Irish lads coming over. Yeah, to be fair, he's, only, he's just living right below me in the apartment, yeah. so we were playing block and all, so haven't been, you know to, haven't been able to get rid of him. Uh, <laughs> Dawson's Dawson's sound, you know what I mean? Obviously, Irish teammates, and you never would have thought being rivals in Ireland, they'd be going to the same club over here. And funny enough, we're actually meant to so if I offered to get her 15 or 16, mm. work out, but probably a blessing in the skies now, and to end yeah. up at the club as Dawson again is a uh, yeah, it's great. It's good to have Irish lads over here, especially lads that you're, you're used to playing, of playing against Dawson, playing with them. It's just yeah. good that in their faces over here as well. Mm. And as well, Dara, 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 just, Dara. just for sorry, Keith, just for yourself, Dara. Um, you know, when you came across, obviously you didn't come across too early. You know, you've you've had a lot of senior games under your belt, um, playing in some big games uh, for Pats uh, as well. You've also played in or- Ireland as well. So you know, Northern Ireland, you've got a lot of games under your belt at that sort of you know level. Yeah, no, I think it was a blessing in the skies that maybe I didn't. I didn't go earlier, like mm. 17, 16. I, my dad actually always said, probably the later you go over, the better. You're more mature yeah. as a person and as, a, and as a player. But you're kind of thinking, oh, I want to go away. But I've had great memories at Pats. And as you said, I've played in big games and I was still, I'm still only young. And yeah. playing games at 18, 19 at Pats. And you're yeah. thinking, Lads don't get experiences like that at that age, you know what I mean? So I think it's going to help me. I don't know how many games, senior games I have. 50-something, is it? I don't know, 50. Something like that. Yeah, yeah so it's it's good numbers. Like, um, yeah, mm. no, I think it helped me. And You know what, I'm not, it's not, it's, it's not a change in seeing me. Like, I'm playing in big crowds. I played in the cup final in front of 40,000. Mm. So they're going to get big, big crowds over here. I think it's Sheffield Wednesday at home, first home game of the season. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Be a massive crowd here, so that's not mm. gonna phase me. And I think and I'm thankful for the experience we've got with Pats and in the League of Ireland, definitely. Yeah, obviously Troy Parrish was there last season. Obviously, you know, him uh Irish International playing very well at the moment, actually did really well at MK Dons. Did you have a word with him at all? No, just against no. him. Uh it was the <laughs> Kev Belva rivalry. Don't really know Troy to be honest, he's doing yeah, very yeah. well. Yeah. I'm delighted to see him do well. Don't know where he's gonna be going this season, probably mm. to the championship owner. Mm. Hopefully he can get into the sports team. We like to see the lads do well, but mm. now and Connor Coventry, obviously the captain of the twenty ones, he was on to me and all. Yeah. I asked him a few about the club, and he sold it to me very well. He really enjoyed his time here. So another reason why I wanted to come down to Dons and I'm delighted that we're here now is because they have a good success with yours, young lads coming over. Troy Parrott, Connor Coventry, Warren O'Hara. I think he played every game last year. So mm. yeah, now it's great, and I'm loving it. Yeah, it's important, isn't it, Darren, to find a club that actually kind of suits your style of play. A lot of players, they go over sometimes and they kind of pick the wrong clubs as such, don't they? But with MK Don, same with Dawson, actually, as well. It really suits them. You mentioned the big pitch as well. Like, uh, the likes of you and Dawson really relish a pitch like that. Like, look, you're smiling yeah, already. Um, it's, uh, yeah. I'm hoping Dawson can just find me over the top and then I can get some goals and assists, you know what I mean? But, no, look, Take all the glory. <laughs> uh, yeah, people can make rash de- rash decisions and probably jump into moves too quick because mm. you're thinking, geez, I want to go away, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, you have to look at what's going to be best for your career, and mm. not however, however long you're signing in your force contract, but what's going to benefit you as a player. So, yeah, now I'm glad things probably didn't happen when or maybe I wanted them to happen regarding moves and all. So I think this was just meant to be. Yeah, what are your goals for the season on a personal level? Just try and play as much as I can. I don't mm. want to... You know what, I'm just taking it day by day over here. Mm. I think that's the only way you can take it because it's, it's a new surrounding and there's not point looking too far ahead. Just play mm. as many games as I can and whenever, whenever I'm called upon, just give 100%. I'm not going to say I want so many goals and so many assists. It's my first yeah. it's before the season over here, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Just uh, settle in nicely and hopefully you can have a, a good benefit on the team. And as well, Absolutely. Darren, um, you've got players as well. They obviously, 
signed obviously yourself, Dawson, uh, Louis Barry as well, who was with Aston Villa. He actually played against, remember, against Liverpool that time mm. um, in the FA Cup. And then they obviously signed uh, Will Grigg as well, who's a very well known player. Um, I'm sure like you'll be able to, you know, get plenty of assists from the likes of Will Grigg, you know, which are balls into the box because he is quite elite finisher as well. Yeah, no, he's a big name, isn't he? Yeah. Don't have a like that for no reason. He's he's a great player and it's a uh, yeah, you now like if we can if we can get a few assists for Greg, he'll be buzzing. Hopefully we can strike up a good partnership. We seem to be linking well in training, so hopefully we can we can do it when uh Mars when the season comes around. But yeah, now there's great players in this squad and I learned I learned many things from the Pats lads. So if we can take other uh other little tips from the lads over here, I'll be doing well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll get on to a bit about St. Pat's now, Darren. Obviously, how much did you enjoy your time at Pat's? Like, clearly, like, I've seen players at Pat's, obviously, but you had a real rapport, didn't you, with the fans? Like, a proper yeah. rapport with the fans? Like, No, there's, I think a few of them are coming over as well. The, the game against Akron and Stanley in a few weeks. So, yeah, no, it's great. And I just think it shows that they were they were very good to me. And I mean, it helps when the fans, the fans love you. And I was in the pub. Obviously in Richmond, just uh, the in front of McDowell's and the fans, like everyone's coming out and you give me a hug, wishing you the best of luck. And you don't get that everywhere, you know. Like as a young lad to feel that love, you wanted to leave everything out there in the pitch. And to be fair, all the fans, all the fans are brilliant for me. And you know, I'll be back in Richmond when I get home and I'll be supporting them tomorrow night in Europe and uh, hopefully the boys can do well. Brilliant stuff. You got yeah, one there, as well. <laughs> just and for and over your career, you've obviously had two great managers, um, Stevie O'Donnell, uh, Tim Clancy. But just more on Stevie for the minute. You know, Stevie obviously gave you your chance in the first team. How much of an effect did he have on your career? Yeah, I think most interviews now I do when when I'm asked about Stevie, he, he gave me my chance. You know what I mean, I think everyone was saying mm. you need someone to take a gamble on you, no matter what part of life I going into whatever job you yeah. want they even filled me with confidence from the first day but it was hard on me like don't get me wrong he was, he was hard on me but he just wanted to make me the best player I could be and the best person and can't thank him enough he gave me experiences that I never thought would have got as a 17 year old kid make me debut in the league obviously played against Chelsea but earlier but 17 year old playing the league of Ireland against Derry my first game you know what I just can't hang him enough and I have a great relationship with Stephen to be honest uh, yeah. probably one of the first players in the text me about the move and was on the phone on them when the news broke and just gave me little bits of advice and yeah, like, the way things ended up Pats a bit you know it wasn't great but yeah. like, he, he, he was like he was like nearly a father figure he, yeah. he filled me with confidence and yeah just gave me the chance that every person needs yeah, what's your best obviously, moment Tim, for Pat Sarah? Oh, do you want to talk with Tim? No, go on ahead, Luke. Yeah, obviously, Tim is someone I know as well, and I know he gave a lot of young lads chances at Drada, but I'm sure when you see him, when Pat's appointed him, I know you would have talked to him early on in his appointment, and, you know, he you knew sort of then he could give you a chance, not even just yourself, the likes of Adam Murphy as well, Sam Curtis, there's so many more young lads he's given chances to as well. Yeah, no, Tim. Tim was brilliant with me again. There was a lot of speculation in January about me going, all the rumours and all that. And, mm. You know, it was close. But to be fair, he just he pulled me for a chat quite early on in the window and just says, look, I think, I think I'll get a move eventually. Just keep put the head down and work hard. And I think that's the best mm. thing that probably someone could have said to me because I, I wanted... I didn't know like what was happening. I probably wanted to go. at this when they, It was Hibs at the time. And... He just grounded me straight away and just says, you're still a Pats player. Give everything everything for the club, everything for the fans, and most importantly, everything for yourselves. And Dinty as well, the assistant, very good yeah. to me. Like, they were brilliant with me in the early end as well. They were delighted to see me go because they know that's what I wanted. But now Tim, another uh, massive part of my career. And yeah, very thankful for Tim and, and Dinty and everyone at Pats. Yeah, there could be good moments of Pats. So I'm just wondering what if you had to pick one moment of Pats, what's your favourite? Uh, beating balls in the final, hundred <laughs> percent. Always fight, 
always nice to meet Bowers, but when you be doing the event in front of that crowd, it's always that little bit sweeter. I think Dawson has somehow heard you from downstairs now as well. <laughs> I call it to him. I'm sure he's sick of me, but now to have to have uh, that behind me and achieve that at such a young age in my career, you know what? People go nearly the whole career, if not the whole career, yeah. without winning that in their career. Yeah. So to have my family there and my friends, it was a double decker coach from around the area. Went into the FIFA. I think there was 72 <laughs> or 74 people on it. The whole um, really, uh, yeah, there was. It was a, uh, uh, but you have the semi final as well. Unbelievable. Yeah. Richmond packed out. That's probably the best, the best atmosphere I've had in Richmond. It was, you were obviously there yourself, Keith. It was so special, wasn't it? It was yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> Even then, though I lost my, uh, you know, <laughs> we were under the you're under the clutch for a bit and you're thinking, Jesus, this is tense. Like, this is the games you want to play in. And then when Billy scored that goal, I knew that was it. Like, we're not losing this. We're going to go to the Viva. And my goal that night, that's that and the Shells goal is probably my two favourites. Just yeah. sometimes I look at it back, like, just I just to be buzzing, just looking at it. Like, I just can't believe that. Yeah. He has it on loop, Luke. I just yeah, and I'd say believe. as well. I'd say, yeah, I'd say as well that night it probably took you a while to get to sleep after. Ah, uh, I don't think we slept. We're I don't think he's the only one, Luke. <laughs> I think we're in the gym eight o'clock the next morning, so I don't even think we slept. I was being worried to the moon, but nah, it was unbelievable, Keith, wasn't it? I, I, yeah, I think wasn't. that's there's been that excitement at that time around the club and semi final of the cup. So mm. the part of that and have an impact was just special. Mm, in fact, it was a very good performance as well, overall as well. And I want to talk to you a bit about the Pats Academy, Dara. Um, obviously, you've seen very good players yourself and many others coming through there. What do you put that down to, Pats? What, what's the secret, do you think? Is it simply just good I, coaches? or? I don't know, to be fair. Cause <laughs> they just, just keep producing, don't they? Yeah. Uh, I think maybe I could be wrong. Six or seven at my age or a year above, year, year younger. So mm. proud is at the same time. So you're thinking maybe it's just to say bleeding uh, one, one age group that can do this, but you're saying like the likes of Ross Fay, he might mm. probably be uh and outdoor, I I think has been on the bench. Like mm. and I've went and watched a few of the nineties games and seventies and to be fair, the coaching down there is unbelievable. Like and I'm not just saying that like you're treated like it's it's like an English academy. You walk in, if you don't meet the standards, good luck. If you do, yeah, we're willing to help you and we're willing to put in the work with you. And that's just the way it is. It's black and white with them. And I think that's still the, like you have John O'Donoghue, seven names, Noel in the nine names, Jamie Moore, all them people demand 100%. And when you go into the fourth team, you're ready. So people say, geez, the patch young lads are doing well in the fourth team, but it's the way, it's, it's an environment in the academy that you're brought through and if you're doing well, you'll get a chance and it's up to you to take it then. And I, there'll be more, like, there will be more lads come through the academy. I got me move, Ben McCormick playing now, Sam Curtis was lining up before he got injured. There's more lads to come through, definitely. And yeah. that, that, that's just, that's just down to the coaches and everyone there just supporting the young lads. Yeah, I mean, you look at James, the bank has obviously gone through now. He played a friendly the other day. Josh Keeley's having the time of his life over at Spurs at the moment. Uh, yeah. You know, the likes of them have moved on. Even Luke McNally, if you want to go back slightly further, he's at Burnley now as well. And the likes of Adam Murphy and Sam Curtis now are kind of the new batch to watch as well coming through there. And there's others under that, as you mentioned, Ross Fay as well. Like, it, it is incredible. Like, and from a, I suppose from Pat's point of view as well, like, to be able to, you know, harness these players and it gives them a good reputation for younger players to come in in the future as well and obviously make a bit of money, let's be honest, for, for the League of Ireland club, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think uh, maybe, I think I came into the League of Ireland underage setup at the right time because uh, it was like 70s, 90s, 50s. And you're thinking, like, you went into the unknown at the League of Ireland thinking, Jesus, of DDSL days, I kind of missed the Joeys, the Kevins, the all Ireland's, mm. but probably the best thing that's happened to the young lads because mm. of the demands that you have to meet and Kevin's Kevin's was like the Manchester United you know, of Dublin when I, or of Ireland when I played so they set me up well to go in the Pats but 
Uh, now I think I just do, I just think that uh, that the names that you mentioned, Josh, James, and Luke, it's just great. It's great to see mm. the lads, and it's probably difficult for the fans. I know a lot of fans text me wishing me good luck, and they didn't want me to go. But deep down, they know that Pat's Pat's is doing a good job. You know what I mean? It's gonna happen. Yeah. It is gonna happen. Everyone wants to get across the water, and it's great mm. for it. It's great playing for Pats, don't get me wrong, but I was delighted now to get over here. Great memories made in Ireland, but I just wanted to go and challenge myself. But as well, Dara, as well, there's so many like players that are getting moves as well. You obviously look at Josh who's in the he's training over in uh, where in like Singapore or whatever they are, you know, oh no, South Korea, I think it is actually. Um with the Spurs first team, you know what I mean? Some unbelievable players there. I'm sure he's learning off and goalkeeper as well, and like the likes of Hugo Lloris and you know, many yeah. more, but as well as that, like, and, and you see James Abanko getting 90 minutes uh, with, with Uden 80. It, it's no coincidence, like, the work that's going on behind the scenes of Pats that you've got the likes of these lads coming through. No, it's not. It's not just fluke that the lads are getting the moves. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, it's a big, it's a big uh, reflection on the club. Yeah. And the academy, as we said, the way we're brought through, the demands, the standards we, we have to meet. Uh, but it's great now to see that the young lads, James, I didn't know, did James play 90, did he? He played 90 minutes for Eden Aze, yeah. yeah. And Josh obviously away with sports, so mm. it's good to see the lads that are going over that are doing well. And mm. Yeah, hopefully hopefully a few others can come over now as well. Yeah, and just from the League of Ireland point of view, I mean, I keep banging on about uh, all the young players that are coming through in the last few years in the League of Ireland, but the proof is in the pudding, like Johnny Kenny off at Celtic, Killian Phillips, at Crystal Palace and obviously played a few, few pre-season games. Jacob Bryant, another one, he was at Cork. Mm. Uh, Liam Kerrigan, of course, down to Coma. And even someone like Jimmy Brown, he'd be older than those guys. Like, you know what I mean? But chance he could make a claim at Blackburn this season as well. And uh, it just shows, like, uh, you, like, you know you played in it. Like, this league does produce players. Like, it's a fact. Absolutely. And I, it's not for no reason that these players are going over and because it's a good league and I think maybe people outside Ireland don't actually understand that it's a good competitive league. Mm. Like, there's good players in it, definitely, and definitely more players can come over, but yeah, maybe the League of Ireland isn't as well thought of. I wouldn't say respected because they're obviously respected if they're bringing the Irish lads over, but maybe people just look down, maybe, oh, it's just the League of Ireland. It's you know, throwers, pats, all like on a Friday night, but people just look at England like it's brilliant. But Ireland, Ireland does have good, talented players, definitely does, and it gives the exposure to the young lads, definitely. And I think over the last few years, the league has, has reaped the rewards. And as you said, the likes of Johnny Kenny and, and Killo and, and Jake, they're all lads we keep in contact with, definitely. And you know what, well, you just want to see the young lads go over and give it everything and then see what they can do, give a 100%, and then. See what 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 will be will be. Yeah, even this as well, Dara. Like you even look nearly every day, there's a new player moving across, and and especially in this window we've seen and seen Owen Toll as well today has got his move to Bolton as well. Like he was Derry's captain, and that you know he's got a decent bit of experience behind him going over. And it's as well you're going to be playing against these lads who you've played as well in the League of Ireland. You know. Yeah. No. It's a. Uh... It's great, like it is great, and I think it's mad the way a lot of them have gone to League One, isn't it? I think yeah, guys have actually went, and the majority of them have went to League One. So yeah, mm. now I look forward to playing against the lads. Uh, yeah, and hopefully we get we get a better result. We we better their result, and hopefully near the end of the season, MK Dons are in a higher position than all them clubs. But now look, at it, it's uh, it's great to see the lads going over here, and it's just interesting now to see where where they can get it and. Uh, how well, how well they're going to do. Here's one for you, Darry. Who's the toughest full-back you've come up against in the League of Ireland? Um, you can name, a few, name a few. Name a few. That's Barry Carr. Carr. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Barry's big, like, and he's strong and he's quick. Uh, he's one, definitely. Uh, you have Lafferty off Derry. He's... Yeah, his name experience. Is big yeah. name. Damn two boys. Uh, yeah, look, this damn team are probably the toughest. Just the ex- 
experience off Lafferty and then mm-hmm. I think it's a great sign that Pat's actually getting buried. Yeah. He's a great athlete, you know what I mean? He's tough, he's strong. So yeah, he was a he was a tough one to, to play against, definitely. And well, I've got to ask Lopez, you, I never liked to get a race with Higo Lopez either. He was <laughs> grabbing the- you think he, he's quicker than you think, isn't he? You think I go, <laughs> the game with Alec earlier on the season, I thought it was away from him. Alec, yeah. I'm clear here, one v one. He's behind you. It was with Manus. And I'm thinking, geez, I'm gonna score here. I'm clearly thinking we set a race before I hit the ball. <laughs> um, Typical. He, comes, he comes from nowhere and this slow attack, I was thinking, like this fella doesn't give you your hardest space, but But she's seen yeah. him in the uh, Africa Cup of Nations, like how good um, he was. Pico, Pico doesn't mm-hmm. really deserves. He's unbelievable. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah, he's top lad as well. But them, them three, yeah, probably the toughest I've come up against in the league. Yeah, I've got to ask you, Dara. Um, you love the goal against my beloved Drada. Um, uh, <laughs> you probably knew I was going to ask you that. I um, yeah. yeah. Obviously, look, you've had so many good games against Drada. Uh, this is a team you love playing against. Yeah, now look, I think uh, there's be a bit of banter there between me and the Drotter fans, like, but mm. it's not serious. There's just a bit of banter. Yeah. Like, on the, obviously, I live close enough to Drotter, so a few of my mates are and give me stick as well. So <laughs> I see them on the pitch and they give me the finger and all that, trying to get in my head. But <laughs> now it just seems to be a team I like scoring against. Uh, I always seem to do well against them. It's a, uh, yeah, now I got a bit of stick, but it's all banter off the fans at the end of the day. Like, I knew I upset you a couple of nights going home, so I was delighted yeah. to be fair. The only, the only <laughs> good thing is, I remember the one night you dropped me home, remember, and we were after beating you 3-1, there wasn't a word uh, out of you in the car. No, you know what, I didn't play that. That never I was, happened. I, was, I actually didn't play. That's a point there, he has a point there, Luke. Uh, the three yeah, best players he played with are at St. Pat's. A Pat's trophy yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, obviously, Gay Forrester. Just naturally like, gifted, no isn't he? No surprise there. <laughs> oh, naturally yeah. gifted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Robbie Benson. Robbie Benson's a very good player. Robbie, best yeah. player in the league at half time, isn't he? Mm. Um, very good. Fun. Good all round, kind of. Yeah, he's brilliant. He was very good to me as well, actually. He used to give me a lot of advice. Um. Mm. The third one is a tough one. Uh, thought Mike Smith was very good when he was with us. He used yeah, to love playing with Mike. To be fair. Billy yeah. King there as well, I thought. Yeah. Uh, probably go. You have Alvy Lewis there as well. They only gave me three. I can't have to leave me in a sticky one. Uh, yeah, now I'll probably go with Gay, Robbie and Mike Smith. Brilliant, brilliant. And finally, I suppose, before we let you go, uh, obviously now you're an Irish international under 21 as well. So, um, mm. yeah, how do you think you're, hopefully you're going to be in the squad, obviously, for the game coming up. How do you see your chances against Israel? Uh, yeah, well, I hope to be in the squad. You, you yeah. never take yeah. it for granted. I mean, uh, if I'm in the squad, yeah, you'd like to think we can go and do it, wouldn't you? Mm. Um, Very no matter- confident anyway, no matter whoever's called into the squad, you'd like to think now it's things the first time to qualify mm. for a, a European Championship under 21, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll have our history stay to be mad. I don't think you'll need to build the game up anymore. It's a, if I'm in it, great. I'd, I'd be buzzing to be called up, but uh, you have to go and fancy yourself to go and beat Israel, don't you? Mm, yeah. Be a packed out Tallis Stadium. Mm. Your family there, second legs are away, is it? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. first legs are home. Yeah, yeah I think maybe, maybe a positive result at home and then the away game look after itself. But now I think, I think, uh, we can get it done definitely. It's a uh, yeah. great lads there. That's what I said. You can't take it for granted. There's so many good lads in every position. So, yeah, you'd like to see uh, Ireland and Ireland over Israel. You have to find yourselves. But you never know Israel are there for a reason as well as well. So yeah. please God, say a prayer now before the game. Yeah, hopefully. If you look for, light a few candles. Yeah. Brilliant. Make sure you make sure you light one from me, Luke. Yeah. I will, yeah, get me granddad. <laughs> Legend. And that's bombshell, I think we leave it. Look, Dara, thanks very much for coming on. Fair play to you. No problem.
Thanks, Leslie.